Uh, let me, uh, we only have 15 minutes left, 14 actually. Uh, gentleman there, and the microphone is coming. Yes, maybe a question for Jean-Pierre Cabestan. As we understood from the panel, the Indo-Pacific is a rather floating concept. <laughs> so to speak. But as far as I know, Jean-Pierre, it is not used as such by Chinese diplomats. It is even refused. Uh, so what is the Chinese wording for the same region? Maybe it's not exactly the same limits. And which are the arguments to refuse uh, the Japanese-born Indo-Pacific concept? Thank you. Interesting question. Thank you. Yes, thank you for the question. Yes, I, I didn't mention that at the beginning, but China doesn't, as you said, doesn't like the concept of Indo-Pacific because it sees, it sees in it uh, an, um, an intention to contain China. And the alternative concept proposed by China, and China stuck to it, is uh, um, the Asia-Pacific region, where China is uh, in a much stronger position. The irony is that China is more and more active in the Indian Ocean, actually. And now it has a base in Djibouti. Uh, every, every day, uh, seven or eight of its naval ships sail in the Indian Ocean. So I India is important for China also because most of its uh, oil comes from the Middle East or Africa. So even if uh, it has uh, tried to diversify its uh, energy sources in importing more... And it has access from, from to the Indian Ocean through Gwalior from China, yes. e e uh, from, from, China from, Pakistan. From Burma, yes, yeah. from Burma, through, through Burma. And, and it has also diversified its uh, sources of energy in importing more from the Central Asia and, in, and more recently from Russia. Uh, as you know, uh, it has doubled its trade with Russia, and mainly in importing much more oil than before. So, so that's where we are. And of course, the, the fact that the uh, US uh, PACOM has been renamed Indo-PACOM in Hon Honolulu in, uh, has also uh, contributed to China's uh, um, suspicion about the Indo-Pacific concept. And the fact that it was Abe Shinzo who coined the um, expression in uh, 2007 and then it was picked up by the uh, Trump administration in 2017 when the, pink, when the Trump administration decided to uh, launch a new uh, free um, and open Indo-Pacific strategy, uh, of course, uh, uh, targeting China more than anything else. So clearly there is no reason for China to, uh, to promote that concept, but just uh, the opposite to, to uh, criticize question it. there, the microphone, two questions. Thank you. Um, oh, you, can, you can fight for the microphone. So t I'll take two questions from you, first of all, and then from uh, the gentleman there. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. I'm Christian Rodriguez Schiffer from the Boston Consulting Group. In a previous life, I was one of Chile's uh, lead negotiators for the TPP, so I, I felt oh, compelled, cool. <laughs> uh, given that you spoke a lot about the agreement. So the Trans-Pacific Partnership, well, and the CPTPP, as the Trans-Atlantic Treaty between Europe and the U.S., as the China-US bilateral investment treaty, which was negotiated for 10 years, and others are agreements, right, are rules, such as the World Trade Organization is. Everything we're seeing today are deals, understanding, alliances. And um, question for any one of the panelists, do you see space in the short term, I'm sure no, but in, even in the medium term, for rules to come back, for trade agreements, for actual treaties, that have you know, provisions that uh, become international rules which need to be abided by all countries at the uh, bilateral or plurilateral level. I'm not dreaming about multilateral agreements uh, anytime. Okay, question there, and then gentlemen there. Um, <clears throat> well, I think uh, we had a very important uh, discussions uh, about the new trend in, in the Indo-Pacific well, uh, I think uh, uh, panels uh, uh, really reflected, I mean, uh, very important stakeholders in the region. Uh, well, uh, but uh, I would like to bring uh, your attention uh, to the role uh, Canada can play uh, in, the, in the Pacific. Well, uh, as latecomers, I mean, Korea and Canada released uh, it's important foreign policy and security uh, guidelines uh, in the Indo-Pacific strategy uh, last uh, December. 
So uh, we will act, I mean, uh, uh, according to the strategy, I mean, uh, uh, released between uh, Canada and Korea. Uh, last week, uh, there was a forum uh, between Korea and uh, Canada, and Canada emphasized they will increase uh, and enhance the role play in the Indo-Pacific uh, uh, region uh, by uh, bringing in uh, more resources uh, than before. So uh, they will uh, help, I mean, uh, some underdeveloped members of the Indo-Pacific uh, for uh, better, I mean, uh, welfare and uh, uh, development of its, uh, their economies. Well, uh, I think we heard a very important point uh, about the uh, quote, I mean, from uh, Indian participant, uh, my friend Narayan. Well, uh, he emphasized uh, the way we look at uh, Chinese uh, uh, military advancement or uh, potential threats quite different from other members of the Indo-Pacific. So, uh, there is quad uh, that is a uh, very important uh, component of the security uh, 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 policy of uh, uh, all uh, in the Pacific uh, nations. Uh, so Korea uh, uh, thought about uh, joining the quad uh, as uh, uh, quad plus, but uh, uh, in the uh, forum last week. Well, uh, some uh, member uh, pointed out, I mean, uh, you know, uh, the point, I mean, Narayan uh, just indicated. So uh, there was uh, some proposal that uh, because uh, North Pacific uh, threats, uh, security threats are from the countries in the North Pacific, North Korea, China, and Russia. So what about we form uh, the new Quad uh, U.S. Japan and Korea and Canada. Uh, so, what do you think? Good question. Uh, who's going to? Do, there was a, the trade question as well. From sorry, can you remind me of that question again? Well, I, I, the, I'll, let you. me take on the question. Oh, yeah, sure. I, I think uh, as the TPP negotiator, you'll recall that in the the early days, the question was, why do a TPP? And the answer from the negotiators at the time was, if we create a high quality trade agreement. It will not be universal at the outset. Trying to get the WTO to do the Doha round was a great failure because consensus was the enemy of practical progress. But to do a TPP among the world's largest trading partners at a high level of equality would be an attraction for others to join. The idea is you start as, as big as you can with co a coalition of willing partners and then you build on that by creating something whose gravitational pull will be very strong. I think as we go into a new period of reconstructing the world in this post-Cold War era, uh, we're gonna have to take things a bit by bit, step by step, practical by practical measure, sort of the way Jean Monnet and George Marshall and others made small steps in the aftermath of World War II to rebuild Europe. Uh, Trade, the trade world we should view as um, something we can't do overnight, but we create a, a, a momentum toward uh, an outcome that will, in the long run, be okay. one that leads to a global consensus that is the right but, way to go. Thank you very much. It's, and Canada, of course, is always everybody's favorite North American. So, um, we only have five minutes and 43 seconds left. <laughs> and I know that both MK and Hervé wanted to say something. MK. <clears throat> no, I, <clears throat> there's no magic wand to deal with, with China. Uh, I think the answer to, to in how to deal with China is not to have more and more packs. I mean, we, I think there, is, uh, there are enough packs available. I think the United States has taken on more than its, what, what should be its role in these matters. I think we need a concerted strategy as to how to reduce Chinese influence across the region. I think one measure has already started by, I mean, economically, if you can bring down um, uh, China in many ways, you can do that. The other is for the other nations to understand the, the, the uh, making of the Chinese mind. I think it's, much, it's really a conflict. I think 
I would think that countries like Japan, India, and others who have dealt with China over the years can play a very major role. It's not merely a question of guns and butter sort of stuff. I think it's a deal, dealing with a, it's an ancient civilization. It's now divided and split in many ways. Can we do something to reduce that? What you, if there is a confrontation, China will get, the Chinese population will get together. We need to sort of get, um, how do you separate Xi Jinping from, um, from the rest of the Chinese country? There are a lot of people in China who want a different uh, kind of a system. I think we should emphasize that. And I think that's where some of the think tanks and others can play a very major role. I do think it is counterproductive to add more and more facts. And I'll stop with that. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes, I would be uh, more pessimistic than Douglas, uh, since indeed the concept is uh, really a floating concept, and with the uh, very difficult appreciation of situations, I believe that the multiplicity of organizations and schemes today is convenient for many partners, the major ones and the uh, medium and minor ones, uh, and I do not see why this should evolve in the uh, short and medium term. Excellent. Uh, final question. Any Yes, gentlemen, over there on the right. <clears throat> Good evening. My question is why South Korea... Sorry, can, we can't hear you Microphone. very well. Yeah. Yeah, my question is why South Korea was excluded from the Quadra Alliance between UK, US, Australia and Japan. What, so why South Korea was excluded from AUKUS? Yes. No, from, <laughs> that the quad? from the Quad. From the, oh, from from the Quad? The quad. Or from, from, from the AUKUS? Uh, um, was that a Jap Well, the Japanese have invented the Quad, so... Uh, we may start with uh, Yuichi, right. yes. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't catch the The question, the I question. think, if I heard it correctly, was why was South Korea excluded from the Quad? From the quad. Well, no, 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 no. Uh, from the beginning, uh, South Korea didn't really like to join in a group which can be regarded as a confrontation to China, because China is extremely important trading partner to, to South Korea. Korea. Yeah. So, in the beginning, uh, well, I think South Korea thought that uh, it was not quite wise to join in. But uh, wisely, the four countries, particularly India, partly Japan, have been transforming the nature of Quad. From the be uh, at the beginning, Quad was much more security cooperation organization, a, a group. But after that, the four are focusing on much more technology and the COVID-19 vaccination and so on, these kind of techno te technical issues. That's why the Quad now is much less confrontational to China. So I think Quad can be accepted to much broader numbers of countries in the region, I suppose. Okay. Thanks. We have. Uh, yes. Just uh, thirty seconds. I think that just to add to what uh, Professor Yuichi Soya has mentioned is that to uh, answer your question, I think there's a, there is a quite a, a myriad of uh, issues or the uh, regions uh, behind the decision when uh, Korea was not at the at the very beginning not to initiate uh, and also take part in the whole discussion to join Quad. I think the main primary factor is how to deal with China. And the second is the kind of the bilateral relations between Korea and Japan at that time. It was not that uh, comfortable and a bit souring relations between uh, South Korea and Japan. And also kind of uh, the we do have, I mean, South Korea has uh, quite uh, rock solid uh, uh, alliance uh, partnership with the United States. So I think this bilateral security alliance has been backbone of the whole the foreign policy uh, foundation uh, on the part of the South Korea. Th that, those are the reasons why uh, South Korea at the be <coughs> beginning has not uh, joined the discussion. Thank you. Um, we are almost out of time. There's a few seconds left. I mentioned at the very beginning that uh, the Indo-Pacific region has plenty of flashpoints. So um, flashpoints, by definition, risk exploding. So, on a scale of 10, they will explode somewhere, Taiwan, North Korea, whatever. 
or zero, no, they will not explode. If you take the next five years, where do you put your mark? Okay, 10, there will be an explosion flash point within the next five years. Zero, there will not be. Doug, I, it's I a think one, word, one number answer. Yeah, I, rough, when it comes to the Taiwan question, it's about two, uh, okay, in two. my view. Yeah. All right, uh, so it's a little, uh, MK. I, I think the world has enough wisdom to avoid a flashpoint on Taiwan. So I would, maybe I'd put it at one or two. Wrong. One or two, excellent, very good. Uh, Hervé. Two. Two, okay. Uh, That's uh, about Taiwan issue or the... No, any flashpoint. It could be oh. as long as the Indo-Pacific. So Taiwan could be outside Chennai and India, That's, or it could uh, be... Where? For me, it's the South China Sea. Okay, and... The answer would be, on your scale of zero, it's no problem. I think it's a five. Sorry? Five. Five. Okay, mm, excellent. I'm optimistic. That's why Taiwan, seven. Seven? Yeah. Oh. So, big explosion. Wow, okay. Jean-Pierre? Well, two, two marks. One for the South China Sea, three. Taiwan, four. Well, that's a kind of sobering um, outlook, perhaps, with a five-year time horizon. And uh, there will be an important election in the United States next year, and the term will be a four-year presidency, so that, <coughs> I suppose, adds another uh, uh, perspective to the, the number. Um, I'd like to thank the audience very much. I'd like to thank Sonim and Thierry, who's not here, for getting this excellent panel together, and I think the panel have been very good and deserve a very good round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you.